all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the the study that was published yesterday is by the american cancer society it is funded by them researchers are from the american cancer society as well there are researchers from stanford and french international cancer society plus from iowa the study used cancer cases and cancer death data from 2019 of U US and what they found were that almost 40% of the cancer cases and about 50% of the cancer all cancer deaths were attributable to top few modifiable risk factors modifiable risk factors means those factors that we can change that we can have some control over for example smoking or obesity so here are these risk factors smoking was a top risk factor obesity physical inactivity um, carcinogenic infections ultraviolet light dietary choices and um, alcohol use these were the top one that i remember from these and we can control them we can manage them let's look at the study together so first here is the references this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link and you can get access to drbean.com at a very very inexpensive rate and in our courses at this time we are working on inflammation we just finished the dea's requirement the pain management and i think that was an amazing lecture set and now we are working on inflammation and inflammatory pathways so that is over here uh, this is the study Cancer General of Clinicians, proportion and number of cancer cases and deaths attributable to potentially modifiable risk factors in the US 2019. There are some articles as well. You can actually find more articles too. So with this, now let us get to my drawings and look at that. So of course, I'm going to be presenting summaries of some of these factors. I would request you to look at the study itself and do a thorough analysis. So let's start. So here, modifiable risk factors. I thought top five or seven are uh, important to look at. I have no conflict of interest. So today we're gonna look at the study and we are going to look at those modifiable risk factors and the data that is associated with them. And I am gonna make some comment here as well. And that is, you would see that some of those risk factors have a contribution towards cancer because of underlying contribution towards um, inflammation. For example, excess weight. One of the contribution of the excess weight towards cancer is because of the chronic inflammation that it produces. Of course, there are other factors as well. For example, hormonal inactivity and other hormones that are released from the fatty tissue, etc. So the study, proportion and number of cancer cases and deaths attributable to potentially modifiable risk factors in the US 2019. Clinical takeaways first. Smoking was the top risk factor excess weight, alcohol use, diet, inactivity, ultraviolet rays, carcinogenic infections, those infections that can cause cancers. These were the top modifiable risk factors. So what did we see? We saw or the researchers saw that 40% of the cancer cases and about half the cancer deaths, 44% to be exact, were attributable to these modifiable risk factors. So imagine this, that if we start managing these, we can actually cut cancer deaths by half. We can cut cancer cases by half. That is the implication over here. And we can do that for ourselves. If we, we cannot do it at a societal level, if we cannot ask everyone not to smoke, then maybe for our own selves, right? So we can reduce our risk of cancer death and cancer cases. So some results here. The basic summary is done. <laughs> if you just wanted to hear the summary, we are done. Some results. Incidents, incident cancer cases attributable to evaluated risk factors. An estimated 40% of all incident cancers in adult age 30 years and older 
and they said 30 years and older because the younger population only had 0.6% cancer deaths and about 2% cancer cases. So they, so they did not look into those. 30 years and older in the US in 2019. So here are the number of cancer cases. Excluding melanoma of the skin were attributable to the potentially modifiable risk factors evaluated in this analysis. The corresponding proportion was 40.5% in men and 39.5% in women. Cigarette smoking had the largest publicly attributable factor and attributable cancer cases, etc. So we'll look at that more. Um, then let's just look at this. PAF and attributable cancer cases contributing to 50.6% of all potentially preventable cancers in men, 56% and 39.9% in women. Excess body weight had second largest PAF, 7.6%, followed by the alcohol consumption, ultraviolet radiation and physical inactivity. So if you look at these, these are number one smoking, number one then excess body weight, two, then alcohol consumption, three, ultraviolet radiation, four, physical inactivity, five. Just think about it. Now, cancer deaths attributable to evaluated risk factors. Now we're talking about death. This was the cancer cases. Cancer deaths. The estimated proportion of all cancer deaths attributable to evaluated risk factors in adults aged 30 years and older in the US in 2019 was 47.1% to the modifiable risk factors. So we can reduce our, our risk of cancer death by 47.1% and in men and 40.5% in women and 44% in both sexes combined. Cigarette smoking contributed to 68.3% of all cancer deaths attributable to evaluated risk factors in men and 60%, 60.2% in women. By cancer type, the risk factors considered in this analysis contributed to more than one half of cancer deaths in 19 of 30 evaluated cancer types, more than one half in 19 cases of cancers. Lung cancer had the not cases but 19 type of cancers. Lung cancer had the largest number of attributable cancer deaths in both men and women followed by colorectal and liver cancer in men and breast and colorectal cancer in women. So just some more data. We, we are done. The second part of the summary is done as well. Some more data. Smoking for example. Nearly 20% of all cancer cases in 2019 in the US were because of were associated with with smoking cigarette smoking contributed to 22.7 and 15.8 percent of all cancer cases in men and women respectively by cancer type the largest proportion of smoking attributable cases were for cancers of the lung 85.6 percent trachea 85.6 percent followed by laryngeal pharyngeal oral cavity, nasal cavity, and paranasal sinuses, esophageal, and urinary bladder cancers. Really important to keep in mind. Now, nearly 30% of all cancer deaths in 2019 in the US that were reviewed under these modifiable risk factors were attributable to these risk factors, 30%. Cigarette smoking contributed to 68.3% of all cancer deaths attributable to evaluated risk factors in men and 60.2% in women, but overall 30% of the deaths. Now excess weight, nearly 8% of all cancer cases. Excess body weight was third largest contributor, contributor to total cancer cases in men and second largest in women. By cancer type, however, excess body weight contributing to more than one, more than half of all cancers of the corpus uteri and one third of gallbladder, esophageal, liver, kidney, etc. Nearly 7% of all cancer deaths were because of excess weight or were attributable to excess weight. Cigarette smoking, this is cigarette smoking. Now, dietary factors. 
so dietary factors associated with cancer this was interesting for me as well because of course we all eat food and we all have our choices <laughs> so i wanted to understand what my choices are contributing so the proportion of all cancers attributable to dietary factors arranged sorry ranged from 0.3 percent of low dietary calcium consumption low calcium consumption to 1.4 percent of low fruit and vegetable consumption by cancer type, the proportion of colorectal cancer cases attributable to dietary factors ranged from 4.2% for low dietary calcium. There was another study that saw that men who drink milk at night have lower incidence of can cancers, colorectal cancers because the calcium. So low dietary calcium to 7.3% for red meat and 10.5% for low dietary fiber. Low dietary fiber and to 12.8% for processed meat consumption. These processed foods are really dangerous. That is my comment, <laughs> not in this study. Low fruit and vegetable consumption was associated with 30.7% of oral cavity, pharyngeal, esophageal, and laryngeal cancers, with oral cavity cancer having the largest number of attributable cases. Low fruit and vegetable largest number of attributable cases for oral cancers, oral cavity cancers. The estimated proportion of cancer cases attributable to dietary factors associated with cancer risk, all dietary factors combined was 4.9% in men and 3.4% in women. Modifiable risks. So let's look at some more factors. They have these two these two charts that are interesting there is figure one and figure four figure one is for individualized or you know for men and women cancer cases and then combined cancer cases and figure five is actually figure four is for cancer related deaths separately for men women and then combined so just let's look at some of them look at men for example all risk factors, modifiable risk factors that were studied, 40.5% attribution towards cancer cases. Cigarette smoking, 22.7%. UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation causing, you know, skin cancers, 5.6%. So, wear sunscreens, for example. Excess body weight, 4.8%. Manage the body weight. Alcohol consumption, 4.7%. And then you can keep going here, low fruit and vegetables, physical inactivity, processed meat, HPV infection, HCV infection, HIV infection, low dietary fiber, red meat, and more. In women, all risk factors 39.5. Modifiable risk factor, I'll keep repeating it and I know you're going to hate me for this, but it is important. It, it's not about cancers and the factors, it is about modifiable factors. Cigarette smoking in women, 15.8%, excess body weight, 10.6%, alcohol consumption, 6.2%, and then physical inactivity, 4.4%, and keep going down the line. UV radiation, 3.7%. So, uh, and then combined, all of these modifiable risk factors for cancer cases combined, 40.40%. Cigarette smoking, 19.3%. Excess body weight, 7.6%. Alcohol consumption, 5.4%. UV radiation, 4.6%. Physical inactivity, 3.1%. What that means is, imagine if we just take these top. If someone has all of these attributes, their risk goes up near 40%. And if somebody manages them, their risk goes down by that percent. Here is the um, deaths attributable to these modifiable risk factors 47.1 percent in men and 40.5 percent in women overall 44 percent and then if once again top is cigarette smoking in men then excess weight alcohol consumption low fruit vegetable etc uv radiation and more similarly if you look at women all risk factors 40.5 percent cigarette smoking 24.4 percent excess body weight 8.2 alcohol consumption 3.6 physical inactivity 3.1 and then keep going down the line important keep uv radiation in mind wear sunscreens all risk factors combined 44 cigarette smoking 28 this is attributable deaths attributable to these factors 
28.5% excess body weight 7.3 alcohol consumption 4.1 and then keep going down the line this is the reference and thank you very much for for you know watching this important thing to consider many of these factors lead to either carcinogenesis because of irritation of the cells and multiple uh, uh, factors that would irritate in the cell would then divide and divide and divide and make mistakes and become cancerous that is one possibility inflammation that can be another possibility infections that can actually modify the dna for the the cells and cause infections i'm i'm summarize i'm kind of making it more simple to explain it instead of going into the detail of every mechanism here obesity causing inflammation causing hormonal imbalances etc so control inflammation as well if i was the one who was part of this uh, paper i would have added that please make sure that inflammation is controlled as well so with this thank you very much if you would like to watch more videos such medical videos get to drbean.com i have just finished uh, pain management and there are cmes on that and now i'm working on the inflammatory pathways inflammatory pathways i think for example tlr pathway and nlrp pathway and nuclear factor kappa b pathway and jack stat pathway map kinase pathway arachidonic acid pathway these pathways are really important for us to understand how do we manage our our inflammation what does curcumin does and what does fish oil do and boswellia and quercetin and many others so that series is going on you can join me live or you can get the recordings on drbean.com thank you very much and the links are in the description of this video i would see you the next time have a nice weekend bye for now